Hello, I hope uh, you hear me. Yes, perfectly. Hi, Viola, how are you? Great. Uh, fine, thank you, Vincenzo. Thank you, Isona, and thank you for reaching out and thank you for the invitation. It's a big honor, of course, as usual, to be part of this. Um, and yeah, in fact, we are all friends. <laughs> That's true. Before, uh, before well, starting with the conversation, I would like to introduce to you a little bit better, saying that you are a film historian, you are a, f a filmmaker, yeah, and uh, you are particularly, you have written many books on, on the history of, of Arab cinema, which is obviously for us particularly interesting. But, uh, well, uh, what about the colonizing cinema? What does the colonizing mean? And what does the colonizing cinema mean? So I think it's, um, it's a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, thank you, Vincenzo. I mean, in t you gave me 10 minutes and it is like, please explain the world to me. So I will try uh, to be uh, as concise as possible. But of course, uh, I will have to go a little bit into history. And then in order to understand the, um, uh, well, the, the, the future and the present better, it's always important to go into history. Well, what about cinema? Cinema is in fact or has appeared during colonial uh, the colonial era uh, and what, what sort of colonial era are we talking about of course we we we, the, the, we mean and of course the the european colonialism uh, colo uh, cinema was also you know part of the nation formation projects uh, so intrinsically it is linked to um, also to the to what we call the othering to the gaze uh, if we look at the very first films um, made by the Lumiere brothers uh, almost immediately they sent out cameramen all over the world and of course the Near East uh, was one of the first um, regions which which their cameramen uh, investigated and what they brought back is uh, what research has shown is very often an exoticized and very specific perspective and gaze on uh, the other uh, on the colonized in this uh, in this um, case because at the time the region has been was already part of of the, the colonial projects of of the European different European countries. So, but what is colonialism? In order to understand what colonial what decolonizing means, we of course need of, of course, first of all to to denote colonialism. It is economic, economic and political and cultural domination. It was linked to conquests, settlings and the particularly extracting of resources, natural and human, through slavery, for example. And it was also linked to ethnic cleansing and the extermination of indigenous cultures and populations. Uh, if we take the European example, it was also linked, and this is very important to take uh, Fanon's, uh, uh, not Fanon's, uh, sorry, um, Foucault's uh, understanding here. It was linked to a disciplinary process. This disciplinary process was uh, linked to body or inflicted on bodies and minds. It went parallel to industrialization and capitalist economy. It was the disciplinary process was link, was um, well inflicted through the military, through schooling, through industrialization, and through the alienated labor uh, that was necessary. So, which means you know, populations, indigenous populations, had to be made, uh, you know, to to be transformed into laborers. Um, there were also ideologies and mindsets. Uh, uh, linked to that, for example, the uh, invention of racism was also part of the colonizing project. Orientalism was part of the colonizing project. And as we have learned from Franz Fanon, it had a clear uh, also um, repercussions on the body and the mind of the populations in terms of what it did to them psychologically, created inferiority complexes of the colonized, so it became ingrained in body and mind. Um, 
so when we speak about decolonization, decolonization can only um, uh, proceed in uh, in touching on all on all these aspects that I was talking about. So decolonization historically started uh, in the mid fifties. Um, it was linked to the modern nation formation processes and it extracted also liberation movements. The liberation movements thought very uh, thoroughly about a new uh, culture of liberation. Uh, some of them were imbued with ambivalences of national cultures and of nationalism, uh, which we now have learned also to dissect. Uh, some of the um, some of these concepts were, of course, inspired by the Marxist Marxist ideas of alienation, and this is why filmmakers came up with ideas like the third cinema. Um, and you know all you may all have heard about these concepts: first, second, and third cinema. Um, the liberation movements, well, first and second and third, which means, you know, the first uh, first uh, uh, cinema, that is the cinema that was uh, created by the capitalist, uh, by the capitalist powers and was also part of the imperialist and, uh, uh, and colonialist uh, project. Uh, while, in contrast, the liberation movement started, uh, you know, a sort of new guerrilla filmmaking, and uh, they also tried to, you know, they created film collectives, um, for in example, in Latin America, like uh, Ukumau, or in the Palestinian Film Unit, or uh, uh, the Group Farid in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in Algeria. Uh, Algeria particularly became in 1973 uh, already it had had developed into the new mecca of the um, of the revolutionary movements and uh, at that time it hosted the third world uh, filmmakers um, meeting and it issued for example a resolution um, so this this period, however, has ceased to exist, and uh, with the, you know, uh, with the new era of new new neo-colonial neo domination, as well as the um, uh, spread of neoliberal economy, uh, we think that uh, that you know, cinema as well has entered, as well as theory, has entered into a new era. Now, we know of many, uh, and well, I, I'm sorry, I have really to go ahead to proceed with a lot of headlines. I, I'm almost unable to explain anything be because of the lack of time. So anyways, um, in the last 20 years, theor uh, theorists as well as filmmakers have come up with a lot of new labels, let's say. We know, we speak of decolonizing of the screen, we speak of decolonize the camera. Um, to to E.Y. Smith, for example, was speaking about the, the decolonization of methodologies. Uh, Nukona Van Ngugi, the Kenyan writer, spoke about the decolonizing of the mind, which is linked to the language of also. Um, well, so a new um, after the the end of the decolonizing era, we know that uh, during the time a lot a lot of filmmakers have tried to uh, create a new a new way of filmmaking. Unfortunately, some of them have been in a way hijacked also by the so-called auteur auteur uh, concept, which is as we know historically also linked and and it has spread in the uh, you know through art house uh, cinemas and through art house festivals. So in a way, the market has been able to kind of uh, recuperate <laughs> and uh, you know a kind of recolonize, if you want to say so. And I'm a bit harsh here. Um, uh, filmmaking that came from the third world. Um, so, for now, um, I spoke of three aspects, race and uh, racism, race and of the mind and of structure. So, when we are speaking of a de decolonizing, pro a decolonizing uh, project, we need to, first of all, for example, decolonize 
filmmaking through indigenous and grassroots filmmaking. We, uh, it has to, and here we know of concepts of collective filmmaking um, that allow this, um, that give voice to the indigenous populations and trains them and allows them also to now to express their own minds. Because if we look at, at uh, um, at uh, um, uh, analysis like to how he's uh, to how he's missed for example was speaking about indigenous culture in Australia we see very clearly that even you know our mindsets for example with the with the differentiation and the polarization between uh, between um, uh, subject and object, between uh, mind and body, this is a very European concept and it does not exist in, it did not exist in indig indigenous cultures in the very same way. But we have transported that also into cinema, uh, into cinema. So what does cinema need? It needs a different language. I mean, uh, now spoken language, it needs to allow different and a decolonized language, it needs also to allow a, a different gaze, a different perspective, and it needs to allow a different structure in terms of, uh, we know that part of the film language is, of course, editing, so the structure. Now, but also economically speaking, in terms of, of what are the circuits and who is financing and for what reason, here, do we, pref do we prioritize individual filmmakers and filmmaking, or do we allow who can be in the end hijacked for, you know, by the, by the market? And uh, um, and sold in a way, or do we allow the production of a non-fabricated, non-standardized film making and and film uh, cinema language that allows you know other um, underprivileged and so so far sidelined ways of of filmmaking to come to the fore and to be you know to be heard and seen. That's it. Viola, thank you very much. Definitely, I think it's a great start. And thank you very much for the definition. And uh, I do hope to meet you and maybe we can hug each other again. So. Oh, sure. I hope time. so too. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Ciao. Ciao.